It's the middle of the year and the middle of a shake-up in teaching and learning at Great Bar Primary School, Birmingham. Teddy's here and we're going to count how many we've got, OK? Staff here are working towards personalised learning in maths. The school thinks that the philosophy of the early years foundation stage is a good starting point that the pupils and staff can build on. And to think how many teddies you think are in my tub. Their belief that if they can encourage the children to gain confidence in using and working with numbers early on, then this will impact mathematical standards throughout the whole school. But does it work? I think something that we try to do throughout um, the lower phase in nursery, reception and year one is try and make maths fun and make it part of the everyday activities that are going on. We did notice that very early on you get children that start to say, I'm not very good at maths and often that's something that's transferred from parents and parents who feel that they're not good with numbers seem to pass that fear of number work on to children. So we try not to make it a very big, we're now doing maths. We try and make it a very much part of everything we're doing every day. <laughs> Initially, it's very much getting children's interest in numbers, in, in shapes, and lots of play-based activities. So they're becoming aware of numbers, they're becoming aware of counting. Setting up activities and having an idea of what you would like the children to get out of it, but very much allowing them to take the lead as well. So that's the big shake-up in maths, to encourage personalised learning. They've had to find ways to support individuals through a series of carefully chosen activities, record what they get out of the activity, and try to push each and every child to the edge of their maths comfort zone. In nursery and reception, they're looking at number recognition, number ordering and calculation, the first skills needed for any mathematical problem solver. Two, one, two, three. We recognise that there really is an importance and a balance needed between teacher-focused activities and child-initiated activities. And I think part of the skill of being a teacher in early years is knowing when to stand back and when to actually join in and help scaffold what the children are doing. During whole class teaching time, we, we, we do um, work across the whole curriculum, but we try and feed in mathematical work at least once a week, um, depending on the topic and depending on the focus activities going on. Um, and we often try and um, use songs within the teaching because the children can all be involved and join in. There's often actions, which is really good. It addresses different learning styles. Going to buy some food at the supermarket one tin of baked beans and a bag of rice and a box of eggs and a loaf of bread. Put them in the basket. They've thought about the relationship in the classroom between pupils and professionals and in nursery have given each pupil a key worker who tracks their learning. Five, six, seven. While some of the bumblebees are in a focus group with Rachel indoors, Outdoors, the ladybirds explore counting and ordering numbers with TA Vanessa. Brandon thinks number two. Well done, Brandon. Can you say number two? Wonderful. Would you like to peg that next to? Number one. Next to number one because it, it comes after. One, two. A three. <gasps> of course. A lot of, of what I wanted to get out of, uh, of the activity was to see how much the children knew. But with me taking a step back and, and, and trying to make them think that perhaps I wasn't sure what the number yeah, line order yeah, was either. Yeah. And so they were helping me and we were having fun together. Six. Six. Yeah. <gasps> Peg up number six, please. The weather was, um, was quite windy, so the numbers kept blowing away, so that added to the enjoyment and things. And I, I think, you know, the children, when they think that they've, that you, perhaps you didn't know, and they've, mm. they've told you, that, that really gives yeah, them a boost, boost of confidence. Yeah. After number... Nine. Wonderful. Oh, okay. we've got a number left. What number have we got left? No. 
very much focus in the first term on numbers and counting skills because until the children have really got to grips with those skills they wouldn't really be able to start to look at things like one more and combining um, groups and finding a total. Alima, would you count how many toys I have in front of you now? One, two, three, four, five, six. Wonderful. How many? Six. six. Can you show me six fingers? It's a good try. Oh, Alima's got it. We've got five. Rachel's continuously trying to ensure that the children are really thinking about their maths. Right then, there we go. That's not number six. Isn't it, Alima? Four. That's number four. Yeah. Could you That's find me number six then? Part of the idea of having the blanket was to hide them and cover them. They then had to kind of, you know, work from that number rather than going back to one. But we can also count on from the number that we've already got and work from that. Have we still got six under there now? No. Can somebody, could you have a go at working out how many there must be now? Oh, very clever. What do you think, Emily? On your marks. Get set, go! Next door in reception, and Amanda has started the morning with some games. But it's not just any game. Part of the teaching and learning shake-up has been to look very carefully at where the children had got to in nursery and to make absolutely sure that there is progression as they move into year R. If you look at how you view maths or number work in, in any way, then that will impact on the children. So if so, it's something you enjoy doing and you enjoy teaching, that's going to come across to the children. So I think you need to kind of think about the ways that you would like to be teaching maths and try and be creative with it. Keep going. Fantastic. She thinks she's going to do it. She thinks she might get 19, 11. Wow. We spend a long time really consolidating those early number skills and making sure that children really understand how to use numbers. For example, children are very good at being able to count three objects if you put them in front of them and say one, two, three. But uh, young children find it very hard to actually give you three objects because they'll just keep counting them out. So that was an activity we'd been working on in reception today, actually stopping when you get to a number. Seven, would you choose a number for us? Seven. Put it in your head, number seven. OK. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fantastic, that's a really good skill to have. The balance, though, of any math session is towards independent activity. The whole school believes in a thinking approach and the staff are planning towards supporting pupils rather than always leading. It's really important that children see maths as something that's not just happening in a classroom. It's not something we just go and sit down and do when we're in school. And I think by taking maths outside as well, you're saying, hey, you can do this anywhere. You can do it in the classroom, you can do it at home, you can do it when you're playing outside. Four. And how many numbers are you going to jump on? Three. Right, down to the other end. We're getting our PE today as well, aren't we? Some children love to go outside. It, it puts everything on a larger Two. scale and it just adds another Three. dimension to what we're doing. Four. Five. What number are you on, Todd? <laughs> Go on, help Todd. What number are you on? They believe learning outdoors is a good example of how the school has moved on. In the past, this same learning might well have been a pencil and paper exercise. But done like this, the pupils are much more involved. But it's created a fresh challenge. Now it's made it even more important for the staff to observe and monitor the children's progress and be aware of what the next stage might be. So just how do they do this? What we try not to do is just have, have a, a series of work that we've done the year before and say, well, this is where our children were last year because the starting point is always different and we, we try and always start from where the children are rather than where we would like them to be. Pat 
Come again. Come on, How many? Six teddies. How many yellow ones, Jada? When I do work with children, especially of a lower ability, I always never try to let, give over the impression that I know the answer. Is that good counting? No. What have I got to do to do good counting? One, move two, them. Good girl, Molly. I'm going to move them. Will you count with me? One. And I think if you can have fun and, and make them happy and want to learn, especially in reception, I think then that goes a long way through school. So I never give too much away, and it's a nice assessment to be able to see just how much they can give you by not giving them too much. Can you put me four spots in there? Four circles? I can Wait a minute. Four add two equals... We have a really good system of pupil tracking at this school, and that starts from nursery. So all of the children are treated as individuals. We have individual records on all of them. And I find that really helpful as a teacher because I feel confident that I know where all of the individuals are. I know the small steps that each of them need to take. It's very easy to just take a glance at an area of the curriculum and see how a child is doing, as well as then looking at detail at all the different things they've done and different things they've achieved. And then they're used to inform future planning, to report back to parents, to liaise with other teachers. So it's really useful to gather all that information in one place. Everybody has a post-it notes available to them and they can sit and do them. We try and use those for incidental opportunities. You've just got them there so that if you see something and you think, wow, I wasn't expecting that, you've got somewhere to jot it down straight away and it's straight upon the board. So just how do the staff use the information they have gathered about each child to ensure a progression of skills during foundation stage? If we just talk a little bit about um, how numerous has gone this week and, and how your children have got on with it, and then we can look at where we're going to go with them next week. So I think our children did really well, mm. particularly in the whole class session, and probably took it a little bit mm. further than I thought they would. They, would yeah. they were all really um, starting to use the language of addition. Oranges, I think, needed a little bit more with recognition. Yes. I had one or two of them who could I think it really is a, a team approach. It's a team approach to planning, to assessment, to moderation. And I think when people feel valued and involved at every stage of the children's learning, then um, you really do work as a team and that drives it forward. So that's the shake-up cycle complete. Assessment leading back to planning where each child will go from here. But can Great Bar realistically carry their shake-up into Key Stage 1 and deliver national curriculum objectives using the same approach? I think it really is a bottom-up approach at this school and, and we felt that we, we started by really looking at early years and making sure that we felt we were getting it right. And it speaks for itself really when you look at the progress and the results that the, the children are making.